Exciting, educational, historic. These words help sum up Global Sports Development's London 2012 Olympic experience. The spirit of the Games resonated throughout Great Britain and spread across the world as millions watched on TV or via the internet. In the middle of it all were the many special events carefully orchestrated by Global Sports Development with the help of their generous partners and sponsors. Beginning with the week leading up to the opening ceremonies, the Symposium on Healthy Sport and the Legacy of Doping was moderated by Dr. Stephen Ungerleiter, trustee of Global Sports Development and internationally known author of numerous books and articles about drug-free sports. The prestigious panel included Olympian medalists, along with members of the World Anti-Doping Agency, the agency recognized by the International Olympic Committee for its work on this issue. Among them was Becky Scott, the Canadian Olympic medalist in cross-country skiing. In 2002, Becky finished third to win a bronze medal. Two and a half years later, she was upgraded to gold after it was discovered that the gold and silver winners tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. It's the ultimate dream is to go to the Olympic Games and to, to win a medal there is just, it's magical. But to, to do that using prohibited means or illegal drugs or, or performance enhancing substances, it would never be the same. It would be the equivalent of, of uh, you know, running one less lap on the track and finishing the race first. It just doesn't make any sense and, and the feeling could never be the same as if you did it on your own. Continuing to educate Olympians, coaches, students and members of the media, a second seminar was held to screen and discuss the latest comprehensive documentary on the history of doping and the Olympics, The War on Doping. The film features the man who began the fight against drugs in sports over 40 years ago, Professor Arne Jungfist. His endless efforts to stop the use of drugs by athletes is driven by a genuine concern for future generations. We have a social situation today in many countries where uh, people like, uh, people even outside the family, that we have split families, you know, and all this, how other people become very important to young people could be sports leaders, and we know in particular major sports stars are role models for so many young people of teenagers and even beyond that. So if they are drug takers, then we have a real problem in making those young people understand what a healthy lifestyle means. As the London 2012 Games began, all eyes turned to the athletes and their teams striving for excellence. Global sports development used this time to make headlines by honoring Sir Philip Craven, an international Olympic committee member and one of the founders of the modern day Paralympics. Sir Philip represented Great Britain on the wheelchair basketball team from 1972 to 1988. Because of his exemplary work in the sports world, Sir Philip was presented this year's Global Sports Development Humanitarian Award, along with a check for $100,000 to continue to introduce young athletes into the Paralympics movement. The ceremony was attended by fellow Olympians, along with distinguished members of the International Olympic Committee. University College London provided the perfect backdrop as it hosted several cultural organizations, including a traveling exhibit of artworks created by 33 different Olympian artists from the art of the Olympians Museum and Gallery located in Fort Myers, Florida. 
throughout the duration of the games, winners of Global Sports Development's Youth Cultural Art Contest have their art displayed in the same gallery alongside pieces created by famous Olympians, including gold medalist figure skater Peggy Fleming and the museum's founder, four-time gold medalist in the discus throw, Al Orter. Many other Olympians and distinguished guests were invited to view the art. Bernice King, daughter of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was given a tour by Olympian artist and gold medalist record holder in the long jump, Bob Beeman. I think one of the things that is in common with art and sports is the discipline of focus. And if you don't keep the mind of young people active and allow the creative energies to flow, then they can get into a lot of devilment and trouble. And, and so I see art as, an, as a unique way of, of getting kids to awaken and unlock uh, that sense of creativity and that passion uh, to be able to become a positive vessel uh, for change in our world. The biggest prize for a select group of the winners of the Youth Cultural Art Contest was the ability to personally experience the London 2012 Games. 50 inner city kids from the United States, Great Britain and Canada were chosen for their talents in art, sports, leadership and good grades. Funded through Global Sports Development's Playmakers program, they visited London's famous cultural attractions and saw various Olympic sports competitions live. These are the, the best and the brightest and uh, you know, great group of kids. Uh, we don't just pick kids and say, you're on the road, get your passport. We have a whole selection process. We interview the kids, we interview the parents. We start a year in advance. Uh, we make sure that uh, they understand what it means to be drug free and to f have fair play. Uh, they have to be giving back something to the community. The other great thing that we've done is in about a year, we'll meet with them again with their parents to ask them what this experience was like. Was it a pivotal moment in your life? Was it a game changer? The kids were also encouraged to engage and share with their peers what they learned by their Olympic experience. Best experience I've had is just like walking around and like learning to be the leader that I hope to be better because I really like I've been shy and timid for the first bit and walking around and meeting all these new people have really opened my eyes to see the leadership I could be. The experience changed my kind of life. I would have never gone to an Olympic event and now I got the chance to go and it was like amazing. The students also participated in mentorship programs with legendary track and field gold medalists Bob Beeman and Dick Fosbury. Does anybody know what Dick Fosbury did in 1968? The Very good. All right, awesome. And, and tell us what the Fosbury flop was. It's like a um, high jump when you like jump over the thing and like turn around. That's right. That's exactly right. So let's uh, give it up for, uh, for Dick Fosbury. Thank you, everyone. At the Olympic Games, we are here to watch these athletes do their best, compete well, play fair, and let everybody play. So One of the things that we do at Global Sports Development as ambassadors is, is to promote Olympism and its highest ideals. The lessons that we all learn competing, being on the field, in the pool, in the air, that's really where we've learned how to play fair and promote what is the best in people. There's nothing like the human spirit's desire for achieving success than what is witnessed at the Olympic Games. It's the culmination of an athlete's years and years of dedication to their sport. The mission of global sports development is promoting fair play, sportsmanship and drug-free competition for all ages and in all sports. It starts with educating young athletes who someday will be our future Olympians.